Okay, we're on a practice session where we're learning how to vary up a tune. So uh, we're gonna work on Shove the Pig's Foot, and as I had mentioned in uh, my email to you guys, that I uh, was, you needed to know the tune first, so I'm gonna just assume everyone knows the tune. And of course, you all might know the tune a little bit differently, which is okay, because we can uh, you know, um, learn from each other. Uh, so if you ever get together with people, pay attention to what they're doing. But it, uh, just because it's a practice session, let's get going right on it. So, um, so I'm going to break it up into little phrases and look at how we can change phrases. So the first phrase of Pig's Foot is something along these lines, right? Okay, so, um, so um, play it a little slower. Three, four... Maybe you know it a little bit differently than that. That's great. So now you have a variation right there. Okay. So then um, you uh, could also. I like to start by going down to the bare bones of the tune. So so this to me. Could be broken down into. Then you can kind of fool around with rhythms. So, uh, I just added a few little extra connecting notes, but something and some double stops and some rhythms. But here's the basic notes again. Again, I'm kind of jumping on the beat a little bit there on purpose. Two, three, four. right there too. So the chords are um, G, C, C as in cat, back to G. So right now I'm going to leave the second phrase the same and I'm just going to fool around with trying some of these ideas for the first phrase. So here's what we're going to do. Play phrase one and two together just the way you might normally play. Three, four. Okay, now let's try the simpler version. Three, four. Just a couple extra notes there in a slide, right? Okay, so I put that back in. I notice my bowing is kind of changing a little bit depending on what I'm playing, but I'm still ending this phrase on the second phrase on an up bow. Right? So I'm. Okay, let's just try some other ideas. Um, so instead of going, let's just change one note there. And one note can make things a little bit, you know, tricky sometimes. So instead of going, let me go B to D. change another note so instead of going 
and landing on that G, maybe we want to walk up. So let's try this. And these are all things when you're practicing really should eventually come from you. But right now, this is a practice session trying to teach you how to practice better. So, so here we go. We got this. Um, so we're going to go to D and we're going to go. again with the phrase two we're going to keep phrase two intact right now because we got a lot going on with phrase one and we're just experimenting with phrase one maybe eventually you'll hone in on something that you really like that you want to keep but right now we're just experimenting and uh, you can go back and keep whatever you want or make up something new so here we go phrase one and two two three four <laughs> Make up something different. How about uh, so instead of starting on the B, maybe we're going to start. And again, I'm not. I'm trying not to change it too much. That one might be a little bit too changed, but let's experiment with it. We don't want to go too far from the melody. But um, so here we go. I'm going to start on the D. And then I went back to the. Um, the simple so and I tried to work that out so I ended on an up bow but whatever you want to do there three four Try to stick the same. Two, three, four. I need an extra up bow there. So now it's nice to put a little slide or maybe a double stop in there. So just adding double stops is a nice way to vary up a tune. Here we go again. Two, three, four. good for phrase one um, but let's try to do that because it happens again phrase one so uh, again you can try your own things right now I'm just giving you some ideas but you can try playing along with me on your own thing but right now we're gonna play um, phrase one phrase two we're not gonna change phrase three and then phrase four phrase one and three being the same and you can change them we're gonna just keep playing the section a section over and over again and trying different things to see if you can change just even one note, okay? So I'll start by playing the regular version, and then the second time I'm gonna do an easy, the easier version, which is this. And then I'm gonna just keep changing things up, and hopefully you can keep changing things up, and then I'll give you some time on your own to practice that, okay? So with the strum machine. Two, three, four. Different. 
getting too far away from um, uh, the tune. And again, you have to be aware of that, okay? So that you're not getting too far away. So now I'm gonna put on Strum Machine and I'll share this with you. Uh, I'm gonna <clears throat> show you this. It's a nice thing to practice with. Um, I wanted to share the whole thing here, Strum Machine. And I'm just gonna type in um, Shove the Pig's Foot. And there it is already in there. Okay, and there's the chords. And uh, it's at 55 right now. Let me see what that is. One, two, So the regular tempo three, two would be like this. Four. So that's the tempo, but I'm actually going to start it a little slower because we're just working on improv, so we want to go slow. Again, I'm going to play it the first time with you, the regular melody, and then I'm going to stop playing, and I'm only going to play, well, it's the same chords, but I'll just put it here. We're playing the A part over and over again, okay? So here we go. One, two, three. So I didn't realize I had it on speed it up of speeding up by one beat per minute every time. Sorry about that. I'll actually turn that off. Um, although it's not a bad thing to have disable auto speed up. Yeah. So um, so there's uh, a little bit of practice on that. It is good to know what the chords are. So like here we were the parts we were playing before is G. Let me play that. One. Is two. The part we're changing is this part. Three. First four. two measures. Um, So we were changing those parts, so it's good to know what the chords are. You don't have to necessarily know that. Um, you can still assure there's plenty of people out there who improvise on tunes or change them up a little bit without knowing the chords. Because a lot of people's ears are very good, and most people's ears, you can tell whether something's not going to sound good. Let me just try something that doesn't sound good and see if you can understand what I'm saying. One, two, three. So I wouldn't want to start like in an F sharp Four. here. So I 
kind of like an F sharp on the G chord and a B on the C chord, and they're not even in those chords. Even though they might be part of the melody somewhere along the way as a passing tone, the notes that are important are Okay, so that's on the G chord. One, two, three. We got the B. Four. B. G. G. Okay, so we're playing a G on the C chord, uh, mostly, that's the main, main note, and it goes to an E there, so you're going. So it's kind of passing over the A. And then go back to the E, which is so C, E, and G are in the C chord. And then D is part of the G chord, uh, G, B, and D. Okay, so we can use that. So we could do... Um, you know, and use that G arpeggio. So arpeggios by themselves can be a little weird. Not that interesting sometimes, but... So that's kind of nicer because that's an arpeggio, but it doesn't sound as, as uh, I don't know, arpeggiated, I don't know, even though it is, you're starting on the third degree. Okay, try it again. Okay, so uh, there are some things that the, uh, um, the other thing I'm doing here is I'm just, well, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can see my, well, my fingers a little bit better, is when I go to that um, D, the, uh, the D chord, which is the second phrase, the end of the second phrase, and there's an A at the end, so. Instead of just hitting an open A, I'm hitting a fourth finger A with my open A. And that gives it a nice, um, you know, fiddly double sum so Sam even though we're on uh, the C and the D there uh, it still sounds okay because I'm passing through that so just okay so there's on the second phrase just keeping it simple still staying around the melody I'm going I'm doing a little hammer onto the B. Slide. So even that's a little variation right there. When you add the double stop, you got another variation. That little pulse, you got another variation. Okay, so there's a little bit more there. Let's work on that second phrase a little bit. How about that? So now, when I'm practicing, I like to, again, I like to do things in phrases because there's just so much going on. So I'm going to keep the first phrase the way, whatever way you know it right now. And we're going to work on the second phrase. And again, I'm going to play the second phrase the way I know it, but that might not mean, that's not necessarily the way you know it. Um, so um, let's try... Uh, this right now. Okay, so that's what I'm going to play. I actually even did the hammer on there. Let's just do that. Three, four. Okay, and the chords there are G, D. So let's just change a little bit, little maybe a little note. So I'm just going to go back and forth from the B to the C. Very common fiddly thing to do. You could even just play an open A and D there, because it's a D chord, right? Okay. The other thing I like to do when I'm doing a double stop like that on an open D and A is I might grab the D by itself into that A. So. Or the other way around, A to the D. Then you have the melody 
a little stronger. So. <laughs> Okay, so let's try to put phrase one staying the same as we know it and then going into phrase two with this new way. Two, three, four. Okay, try it again. If you want to add a double stop, I'll try to slow it down again. Three, four. Try to try something else. If this was a class, I'd I, with with you all here. I would be asking you things of ideas because a lot of people have better ideas than me. Um, but let's just keep going with my ideas. Um, how about so we'll do that. This is a G chord anyway. So D B D G hammer on. Let's try phrase one, like we know it normally, into that new phrase. Two, three, four. Okay. Let's do it with the. Let's do it with the. Um, uh, what is this called? Strum machine. <laughs> I'm only gonna do that part though. Okay. It's at 38. One. some ideas going on here. Uh, let's just finish this off since we're running out of time and let's just make something out on the B, the ending phrase which is kind of the same. So you could do something. Some of those ideas that we already used, okay? Um, or we did... Um, Something repetitive there, it doesn't matter, we you know, just try anything. Uh, oh, I see. This is what I play normally. And so maybe. all together. Um, we're going to play this a few times just to end it off. I'm going to put the um, share the screen so you can see this strum machine. Okay, I'm going to see. Got to take it off that. All right, so we're just going to do the A part. Okay, and here we go. Um, play it a whole bunch of times. I'm just going to be varying it up. You're going to be varying it up the whole A part a bunch of times. One, two.
ideas. There are some ideas for starting out and improvising around a tune. We might look at the B part of this tomorrow, or we might look at another tune. Um, I had mentioned we'll do whiskey before breakfast and uh, Angelina the baker. So we'll see how how what I'm feeling tomorrow when we practice. And again, it's uh, just a practice session, so um, hopefully you're trying things on your own as we do this. Hey, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.